Good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Haynes, and on behalf of iDate Incorporated and Bluebeam Software, I'd like to welcome you to this intro to Bluebeam Review webcast. With me is your presenter, Liz Wood. We'll be start by giving a brief introduction to iDate Inc. We will introduce the presenter, and then we'll begin the presentation. iDate Incorporated has been serving the AEC community for over 25 years. This longevity comes from an unflagging commitment to quality training, support, and customer service. Our technical staff has extensive industry experience, so they understand your processes and business issues. Our goal really is to make you more productive in your workflow. It is why services are such an important part of our business. It is also why we sponsor events like this webcast. I encourage you to visit our website, check out our blogs, and follow us on YouTube and Twitter. Today's speaker is Liz Wood. Liz Wood is a Bluebeam certified instructor and a Bluebeam certified consultant with more than 25 years of experience in technical training and support. Before joining 98 in 2016, she had her own consulting business and taught at Portland Community College. She earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Information System from Linville College in McMinnville, Oregon. At ID8, Liz teaches classes on Bluebeam Review Software, provides technical support, and helps customers with software deployment. I will be serving as the proctor for this webinar. Please place your questions in the questions box. We will handle questions four times during this webinar, but I'll be typing in answers as we go along. Now, on to our presentation. There we go. Okay, David, can you see my screen okay? Absolutely. Great. All right. Thanks, David. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm excited to introduce you to Bluebeam Review. Bluebeam Review is a PDF creator, editing, markup, and collaboration uh, software tool. It really is PDFs made easier, giving you more time to get things done while keeping user markup accountability. So let's get started. So this is our agenda for today. I'm going to show you the different profiles you can have in Bluebeam, show you the different ways to place a markup on a PDF, how to customize your markups and then save them to your tool chest so that you can use them later. And we'll be looking at the markups list and how you can just really leverage that to try and improve the accountability for everybody on your team. And then lastly, we're going to be taking a peek at Bluebeam Studio projects and studio sessions so you can see how you can use this tool to help in your project collaborations. Okay, I'm going to be switching over to Bluebeam now. I'll stop a couple times and see if David has any good uh, questions to share with us. If you have any questions, please be sure to put them in the question box down below. And let's get going here. So here's Bluebeam. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today is the interface. So up here top, we have our menu bar. We have little drop downs coming along here. We're going to pay attention to tools, markup, and the toolbars primarily today. So you'll see right here, we have a couple already turned on. We have measures, shapes, and text. So if I look over here, here are our text and shapes, and here's our measuring up there. We also have a little bar over here so that we can resize our workspace. There's another bar down here which will bring up our markups list. You can also just click right there to bring it up and down just like that. Then over here is our panels. So again we have this bar we can pull out to get more detail. If you right click here we can show all of the different panels. Okay, so this is your work area. It show, has your tools on it, and what you see depends on what profile you have selected. So right now we're in the review basic profile. So watch the work area here as so I change profiles. Let's go to uh, quantity takeoff and see the work area changes. It brings up tool chest with the tools we wanna use. There's our markup list down here below. So you can customize your, prof your uh, profiles. 
So if you basically you want the review profile, but you want to add or delete a few toolbars, you can do that and then you can save it so you can use it over and over again. You also have the ability to export it to team members and everyone's using the exact same thing. You can also add an uh, entirely new profile if you want to really customize it yourself. So, uh, oh, so just to point out here, so when you do export it, it's just going to create a little file there that you can send off to your team members. Okay, let's see. Let's um, look at the toolbar. So here again, you can see the ones that we have turned on. Really easy to turn them on and off. So let's say we want to uh, add the edit one. There, it popped in up there. You can grab these and move them around. Same thing with these over here. You can move them around so they're side by side if that's what your preference is. Easy to turn them on and off just up here and right click. And then I can turn that back off again. So you see that I already have a document open. So if we come over here to our file access, this is how you can open up your files. So you'll see that I've got this one already open and it's dark bolded so that this is the active one. This is a, a document that I had opened earlier. You have the ability to pin documents if there's something that you're gonna be using over and over again. So I can uh, pin it to a new category so I'll just make a little ID8 demo category up oh, there it is right there so let's see let's do that again so markups pin there we are right there so now it's popping in there all right So let's see, I've got this document here. So you can see down here on our status bar that this is an eight and a half by 11. So Bluebeam knows that I just wanna scroll down through this document like that. But if I have a much larger document, just a second to render here. Let's try this again. There we go. It knows that I want to zoom in and out. So I can click and drag and move around the document like that. So if I come down here, I can split my screen. So I can have my specs over here and I can go through my specs and zoom in on my PDF, wherever it is that I need to confirm something and let's bring up the original I'll close that so I can also be zooming in at one area over here and be zooming in a completely different area over here take a look at those two those two different rooms if I come back down here to my status bar right there, I can sync these. So now when I'm looking over here, they're synced up. Just like that. Okay, so let's see. Do we have any questions so far, David? Yes, we have we have a question. Okay. So in, in the interface, how do you get the status bar to display? Oh, that's actually a really good question. We've had we've had a few people be stumped with that. So when you first open it, it's not automatically turned on. So you just come up to tools, toolbars, and it's right there. So you can either come here or you can hit the F8 and that will make it it uh, appear. We've actually had our, our uh, resident experts stumped by that one as well. So that's a really good question. That's all, all right. we have. Okay, great. 
We'll hop ahead to markups now. So let's get a nice clean area. Okay, so there are three ways <clears throat> to grab your markup. So obviously here, tools, markup. I can grab it from here. So grab a text box. That one there. And then you probably noticed this little T right there. You see your keyboard shortcuts for all of these. So I can just come over here, I can hit T on my keyboard. There we go. And then of course over here, we have our tools, so I just grab it. Just like that. So let's see, what else can we play with? So we've got um, highlighter in the pen. So this is cool. I was very happy when I saw this. So if you hold down the shift key while you do this, you get a perfectly straight line, just like that. And let's see, we can do a circle. Same thing, if we hold down the shift key, we get a perfect circle. We can uh, insert an image, so I can click on that. And let's say, here, yeah, let's put this right here. I could even crop it. Get just the part that I care about. We can draw arrows there. And probably the most popular one is our Cloud Plus. So I can just highlight this whole area and say repair wall and repaint room. Pretty slick. Let's see. So we've got um, these markups on. Let's see. Here's another trick. So let me grab a cloud. So if you've got kind of an odd shaped room, you can just click in the corners. And then I can either double click or hit the enter. And now I've got a uh, cloud, the exact shape of the room that I'm talking about. So here are some other markups. We had our tool, <clears throat> our measuring tool up here. So here, let's just come over here and click on measuring to the, on our panel bar. So this just gives us a little bit more information, a few more options. So the first thing that we want to do before we start measuring something is we need to calibrate. So let's come down here, we've got some measurements. So I'm going to click on calibrate. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to click here and here. And we're going to tell it that that's that. Now to make sure, we can come over here and grab our length measurement. And so from here to here should be 11, 8, and it is. A little trick that if you hold down the shift key and arrow down, then you can move that so it's not right on top of your graphic. So now that we have our measurement, calibrated, we can measure rooms. Let's say we want to know what specifically this room is right here. There it is, just like that. Let's see, another good one is the count. So I'm going to scroll, so let's pay attention to this right here. So we're going to click our counting tool. There it is. And we'll go counting the toilet seats here. Then you notice it updates that right there. So we have these markups on here. We can also customize these markups in a variety of ways. Typically in a design review, everyone assigned a specific color. So we can do that. 
So let's come back up here. So here's our cloud. Just need to select it here. And remember, I have this bar so I can close that, give us some more room. There we go. So this right here at the top is your properties toolbar. Okay, so we can change the properties of this markup. So let's come into here, change the line color. Let's do purple and let's give it a fill. And we can change the opacity. We can even do a highlight so you can see what's underneath it. And let's give us the hatch pattern too. So let's do that. And then notice as soon as I added that, now I've got these properties here that I can change. So let's do dark purple there. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So we're going to do purple. Can give it a fill. Maybe this fill has a different meaning. So highlight, change that down a little bit. Change this color. So you notice that this has more options. It's because not only do we have the cloud, but we also have this little text box. So line weight. So we've got a line, but we need to give it a line weight so that we can actually see it right there, see? Same thing, let's do this and change that down like that. Oh, here, and then let's, if I hover over here, it'll move the bar. I didn't have to click on anything. And let's change that to dark purple. So now we've been able to customize these markups. And if it's something that you're going to want to use over and over again, we can save it. And a good option on all of these markups that you're going to want to use over and over again is to give it a name. And this will become very useful when we're using our markups list. So we can actually let's go up here to the properties. So we're going to make this, let's say, um, contractor. Okay, let's go ahead and do that with this too. Here, let's make these so that the same. There we go. So come up here. Now I'm going to make this a contractor mark up as well. So now what we want to do is we want to save these. So right here, I can say add tool my tool chest. So let's bring up our tool chest right there. So I've created a demo tool set right here. So I can click on this, add to tool chest, and I can add it to my demo set right there. And there it is right there. So um, another way that you can add tools to a tool set is just by clicking and dragging. So maybe this is something I want to use over and over again regardless of, of what tool set I'm in, so I can move this into my, my tools. Anything that's in recent tools is going to go away when we close the Bluebeam session. So if there's anything in here that you've used, if you've created that you want to use again, you need to save it into one of the tool sets down here. So you might notice that, let's see, Make sure you get both of these in here. Okay. So if I click on this, I can toggle back and forth between properties mode and drawing mode. You can also right click and you can choose to have it be in properties mode or in drawing mode. So the difference between these are is if I am in oops here. So if I am in drawing mode, it's going to give me an exact copy of the markup the way that it was drawn. So if this is something that you would use over and over again, then you just have an exact copy, you don't have to change anything to it. Okay. 
if this is something that you want to keep a similar type thing, but it's not going to be exact copy properties mode. And then now I'm going to have a purple cloud but I can still make whatever size I want and I can put in something different here. So once we have the tools in our tool set, we're going to want to save them and then you can export them to members of your team. Then everyone's using the exact same tool set. So that's a great way to make sure that everyone's used the same standardized tools. Again, that helps you be more efficient and save time. Okay, Adam, any, uh, excuse me, <laughs> David, any, uh, any interesting questions so far? Yeah, I've been I've been madly typing most I'm of them. I'm sure you uh, have. <laughs> <laughs> so that I, I can't quite see on this, but the, someone asked, what is the icon to the left of the sync document page icon in the status bar? That one right there? I guess. What does, I, so why don't you just go through those just very quickly if you know what, if you hovered, it's not giving you a tool tip, is it? Yeah. So that's the, the reuse markup tools. This one is the snap to markup. Okay. This one is the snap to content. This one is the snap to grid. And this one is show grid. Well, we hope one of those is what the person was was asking about. I okay. have a. <laughs> I was still trying to find out which icon that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, should we hop on over to the markups list? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Great. All right. So again, so we've got our little bar down here that we can use, so we can just click on that. So the markups list will show everything that I've put on this PDF so far. And we can sort by subject. So here are the contractor markups that we made right there. We can resize these columns. We can move them around. So uh, let's see, maybe I want to have uh, the comments right after it. So I can click and drag. And there it is over there. We can come up here and look at all the columns. And I can turn them on and off. So uh, maybe I don't want to see layers. So I can turn layers off. Okay, but right here we've got color. I can turn off color, bring it back just like that. So we can sort and we can filter. Let's see, I think I'm going to show you how we can import comments first though, because that would be a little bit more impressive. So let's do that. So if we come right um, here, so we can go to markups and import. and come to my import markups. So these are PDFs that I've sent out asking for comments, and these are the comments they've sent back, and boom. You see we have a lot more comments now on here. And so if we zoom in on one, and I can click on it, it'll take me right to it. So then there's never any question about what people are talking about. Click on it, and it just goes right to it. Just like that. So let's say we want to filter this and we only want to see, oops, say we only want to see the electrical comments. So I can select electrical and now all the other markups are still there. Move this down a little bit. They're just grayed out and the only ones that are in the forefront are the electrical ones. So another great feature with the columns is, these are the standard columns that I showed you. Okay, we can also have custom columns. There we go. So here I've created a responsibility custom column already. So I'm gonna click on modify just so we can see what the options are. So this is a choice column because I wanna be able to choose who to sign this to. Other options we have are you can make a check mark, date, formula, number, text. Uh, formula would be very handy if you're doing estimations. 
going to have other choices um, and have monetary values assigned to them. So that's a very powerful tool you can use. So I'm going to go ahead and count out of this. Okay, so here's my responsibility column. Let's bring this over a little bit more. Okay, here, let's put it right after author and we'll make author a little bit bigger. Okay, so here are all of the electrical comments that I have. So I can assign responsibility. So I can double click and I can say, okay, I want uh, Erickson to take care of this and he's going to take care of that. And we'll have Leighton do that and Leighton do that. And we'll have uh, Robinson take care of that. So now I have markups. I've identified them as electrical. I've assigned responsibility to them. So what would be really cool is to make a summary and create basically a task list. So here are your options. You can do a CSV. If you want to do it like an Excel, you could print it. PDF summary is the way to go. So bring that up. There we go. So again, you can select columns. You can filter. I've already filtered everything but electrical, but you can pick something else, or if you don't want to filter, you want to have everything in there. So for output, we definitely want a PDF, and we want to append the hyperlinks to the current PDF right there. So let's make this uh, something more meaningful. How about the electrical? So it's going to generate our PDF report. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to click on thumbnails so we can see both. So this is my report. And let's see, we can say uh, outlet not installed. Well, what outlet is he talking about? So I can click right here and it's going to automatically link to my PDF and show exactly where that is. So once again, there's no confusion. Everything's clear, concise, cuts down time and miscommunication. Okay, so this is a very uh, powerful tool to use with your PDFs. It helps in collaborating on things. We have some other things that we can use in collaboration. Uh, David, I'm going to hop on over to Bluebeam Studio unless you have some questions. Yeah, the question is, is people are asking a lot of questions. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, I want to go back to the, someone had a question about tool chess. Can we, if you're just only that I want to uh -huh. go back to that. So um, what do team members do with the exported uh, tool set to implement? Oh, it, yeah, it just, it just creates file. All they have to do is, is double click on it. So you, okay. oops, export. So it's going to save to, you can just save it to your desktop or whatever, and you can email it, and uh, then they can just, oh, I already did that one. <laughs> uh, it'll just, uh, yeah. it'll just uh, create a file, and all they have to do is double click, and it imports right in. That's all you have to all do. Right. So there, there's been some questions about what version you're showing, and I've been telling people that you're showing the 2018.4 version of Bluebeam yes. View. Yes. And uh, it is extreme, though I don't know there's anything you're showing that is extreme only. In I, don't showing, so. I don't I think don't so. I don't think so. The best, the best I could remember off the top of my head, and that um, there's not anything you're showing that's a, necessarily a brand spanking new feature, though there could be one snuck in, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the, okay. the, the, the interface changed. We've got the property yeah. toolbar. That's new. That's probably the most exciting thing right there. Um, yeah, and I don't think there's anything else I've shown, I, I've shown that's, that's okay. not the same. Yeah, I know the and and she's and so I've also said that you're showing the the white background. Why don't you just show for a second, changing to yes. a dark background? That may confuse a lot of people. The white. Room. Oh, okay. The the white background we've discovered works better when we're demoing for people to see. So let's see, right there. So I went to and here. Let me do that again more slowly. So come up here to review preferences. I'm under general theme right here, light. So if I change it to dark. Yeah. 
There we go. Yeah. Some people are more familiar with that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, there's been, you know, I've been explaining to people 2018 has a lot of different, the look and feel, the UI is very much different. And, and there's, yes. there's some yes. people on that may be as much confused over that. Yeah. It's, What's if been, you're, yeah, what, yeah. yeah, my experience is after about a half hour or an hour of use, you get real used to the new UI. What's your experience? Liz. Yes, yes, I would say there's a little bit of a little bit of a learning curve. It's like, oh, this is different, <laughs> but yeah, within within a little bit, you get used to it, and and I don't think anyone would want to go back. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the questions. All right, okay. In that case, we're going to close this. Well, let's not save that. Okay, so now we're going to come and look at Studio. So again, this lets, just lets you do more with a PDF. So this is a fabulous collaboration tool. So we have projects right here. Oops, projects and studio. So think of projects as a lightweight document management system and you can upload all of your project files. It doesn't have to be just PDFs. There we go. So these are all of my folders. So I've got some images folders. There's my comments PDFs. There's my other PDF sheets. I've got specs. So I've got a, I've got a Word document there. I've even got a text file. So you can put all of your documents into the project and everyone can have access to them. So uh, if I just try and open this like this, double click, it's going to, oh, here, I just show, yes. I was just asking if I wanted to leave that open so you could so, see it. <clears throat> so you'll see up here, I've got a little lockbox. So this is opening up in view. It's not really giving me access to do anything with it yet. So projects is really kind of geared towards one person at a time, checking out one document and doing something with it and then checking it back in. So if I come up here, click on that, I can say check out. And now I can zoom in. And I can see what people have done. So let's see. Let's come down here and make another comment. Uh, I've made too many comments. I can't find a new place. So let's say, um, I just want to draw a cloud plus around this and say um, uh, ask owner okay so then when I'm done I come back up here and I can say check in. I can make a comment, um, clarify office space use. Click on check in. <clears throat> so you also have the ability to look at the revision history. So you can see this is the only one spin in here. You can add notes, see what everything everyone's done. As an administrator, you also have the ability to restore previous version uh, revision in case something got really messed up. You can you can go back. So that's pretty much it for projects. So I'm going to close that. Oh, and then I, what I was going to show is you can toggle back and forth between if you want to see the the thumbnails or the or the the detail list. I prefer the detail list. So we're gonna close that, and we're gonna come over here to 
sessions. So again, projects is kind of geared towards one person in there doing one thing at a time and checking it in and out. Studios is really for everyone to get in there once and make their markups all together. So everyone can be working at it um, live at the same time, whether you've got coworkers sitting across the room or sitting across the country or on the other side of the world. So <clears throat> over here we have our record. So let's see, I know David was in here earlier, so I can come in here and I can say, show me David's comment and zooms right to it. So you'll see that his markup is grayed out. I can't change it at all. I can't do anything to his markup. I can reply to it. I can set a status. I can uh, alert him to something. If he's in the session, he'll get a pop-up right away. If he's not, he'll get an email. Okay, so uh, you bring up a markups list. So there's David's comment there. Um, let's see, I can also sort this so I can sort by author. So there's another comment that David made. It pops over there. So again, I can not change his markup. So right here, right here. It's all grayed out, but I can reply. And I can also, so uh, we're checking. And I can also come over here and I can set a status and I can accept that I'm, I'm accepting responsibility for, for, for making sure that this is meeting code right there. So I can't do anything with David's markups, but I can make my own. So let's see. I had a clever thing that I was going to do and now I'm not finding it. So let's just, um, where's my coat closet? Oh, here, we'll do this. So I can make Cloud Plus, janitor closet. Um, I can say, uh, what are electrical needs? Okay, just like that. Okay, so we've got our record over here. So we can do here, let's go back down here. So it shows that what I just did there and also in the markups, I can sort by date again. So there's the markup that I just did there. So we can come to the record here and we can do a record summary report like that. Make that a little bit more meaningful, put the date. And we've got a report. So same thing, come over here. So this is the report of everything that's happened in this session. And same thing, I can click on here, let's do this. Nope. There we go. Let's try that again. Let's see. That didn't quite work the way I was expecting. Oh, it's popping up onto my other monitor. Well, what happens is 
it's going to show once you click on on the report it will go right to that markup on your PDF as well so again there's no confusion about what someone's talking to it's on the report you can click on the link and it'll automatically pop to the PDF and where that where that market has been listed so uh, so once again it's just a really good tool to help everybody get into one PDF at the same time make your markups communicate in real time people can come and uh, here we go. So you have the option to just leave the session temporarily. So you could leave the session open for, you know, a number of days, and then people can come in and out as David did and make their comments, just like that. Okay. Well, that's pretty much that. Uh, David, did we have any other questions? Yeah. Um, in studio sessions, can you create a custom column during a session? You, you can't create the custom column actually during the session. The, the custom column has to be created on the PDF prior to importing it into sessions. But absolutely, once it's on the PDF, you can you can use it and reference it in sessions. Yeah. And then someone asked me about the, uh, the viewer mode within review, right under the, uh, right under the review pull down, the upper left-hand corner there. And the view mode is, is and so what I explained was, was that, um, after you can get a trial for 30 days right and then <laughs> and then um after 30 days it moves into this view mode and that's right the, the dialog yep. box right there yep. tells you what you can and can't do yeah that's true yep sorry I, that's okay. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't both answer it and show them at the same time so i anyway. understand anyway. all right all right well i think that's that's it for me all right great let me so uh, we want to thank you for your uh, time today and um, that this presentation has been recorded and a link will be sent out to uh, all the attendees so you can view it at your own leisure again. Also wanted to comment there was someone asking about training please check out our website at id8bb.com under the training tab and um, we have a new two-hour online training session with a live instructor and actual exercises that can be done. Um, and that's on our website at id8bb.com or contact uh, us here. At, you can also contact us at bluebeam at id8inc.com too. Uh, and anyway, enjoy the rest of your day.